Hello and welcome to Space, here from the Transmission Control Room at SES in Luxembourg. Now, the World Cup is underway and millions of us all around the world will be watching one of these being passed around a football field in Brazil, live. But how does that work? We'll find out. But first, some more news from the universe this month. ESA astronaut Alexander Guest is now a few weeks into his first six-month mission to the ISS. The 38-year-old German will be looking after 39 European science experiments. This is the moment when amateur space enthusiasts celebrated regaining control of an abandoned NASA spacecraft called IC3. It was launched back in 1978. And the Hubble Space Telescope has released its best ever ultraviolet view of the evolving universe five to 10 billion light years away. Now there's only one way that all of us can manage to share the excitement of the World Cup all around the world, and that is using space technology. It's no exaggeration to say that the World Cup is a global event. Thousands of fans will enjoy the football in person, but it's estimated that over 3.2 billion of us will catch some of the live TV coverage. It means that almost half the population of planet Earth will see what's going on in 12 stadiums in Brazil. The World Cup is an enormous uh, thing for the satellite operators, an enormous event. No matter what the technology is used uh, at the homes to receive the television, satellites are being used. The World Cup is broadcast under what satellite operators like SES here in Luxembourg call occasional use transmission. That's the name for bandwidth allocated alongside regular broadcasting in order to cover special live events. And this is a busy time. The World Cup dominates all occasional use space in a, in a country like Brazil. With good planning, we're able to augment the capacity maybe two years in advance by relocating another satellite where possible. But in reality, we've, there is only a limited amount and pretty much all of the capacity will be used on the day. The fact that some of the stadiums are in more remote areas of Brazil just increases demand for satellite technology. Brazil is a little different from the previous events again, simply because the connectivity between the stadiums, the fiber infrastructure, um, there isn't enough of it as the broadcasters need. So satellite is taking a much bigger part of all that. To give you a basic idea of the main steps in broadcasting a goal from Brazil to your home, we organized our own little kick around. In this team, each player represents a different stage in the process of transmitting images from the stadium to your home. So, the signal is passed from the camera to the studio, to the satellite, to the downlink, and then into your TV. It means that when the players celebrate in Brazil, you can truly share the moment. Normally, these, uh, these, each of these hops takes around about half a second. On top of that, there's a little bit of time associated with the processing of the signal as well. So you can imagine, after the goal is scored in Rio, people living in the north of Siberia will see that goal about, about a second to a second and a half later. Building, launching and operating telecom satellites is a very competitive business. Some of the biggest players are European. Utelsat operates 37 satellites and SES has a fleet of 55. Hispasat's Amazonas-1 satellite is a key link in this World Cup's broadcast chain. Meanwhile, the European Space Agency helps industry develop new technology. We are working on lighter satellites, more efficient satellites that uh, allow for uh, more equipment larger antennas, more antennas to be used so that basically with the same equipment uh, on the homes as a minimum the antennas, changing just the set of box maybe, we are able to uh, receive richer content, more content. The drive for more continues with this World Cup where some matches will be recorded in Ultra HD quality for the first time. Thomas Vreda develops new tech for SES. Here we test new satellite receivers, new media technology and um, 
try out new electronic program guides. The latest addition to our uh, media demo room is an 84-inch Ultra HD flat screen where we test basically uh, quality and delivery of Ultra HD signals. What we also do is we developed a technology called Satellite to Internet Protocol, SATIP, where we take live television onto a tablet, for example, or onto a notebook. This here is connected via your home Wi-Fi network. Whatever device you use to watch this World Cup, you'll be relying on machines 36,000 kilometers out in space. They follow a geostationary orbit looking at a specific area of the planet and use solar energy to boost broadcast signals. And their home is far from welcoming. The life of the satellite in orbit is a very tough one. Um, it lives in a very, very difficult environment. It's very cold in space. There's a lot of radiation. There's a lot of gravitational effects on this thing. So everything has to be taken into account in the design. So if you take, for example, over Europe, the satellites are basically being um, pulled in a, if you like, a northerly direction by the uh, gravitational effects of the moon. And they're being dragged around to the east by the mass concentration of the Himalayas. <laughs> Despite the harsh environment, satellites can keep on operating for over 15 years. They can carry any kind of TV picture, and the chances are that a lot more content will be coming your way soon. I think that with the advances of uh, a wearable technology, in the future, also the, uh, the, the football players will wear cameras. And I can choose, in that case, to see a striker and see the view from the striker uh, when he's attacking or if there is a penalty or a free kick, I can see the view from the, uh, from the goalkeeper. It all promises a rather rich and exciting way to watch sport and share the fun. Away from football now and to science, and this year we're following the Rosetta mission, and right now the spacecraft is slowing down as it gets close to its target comet. Previously on Comet Hunters, the team were deep in mission planning. Today, Armel can see their efforts beginning to bear fruit. For a few weeks now, we've been able to see the comet and it's become active. That's to say there's now a cloud of dust particles around the comet. We regularly take photos of the comet before and after our manoeuvres, and with those photos we manage to work out the impact the manoeuvre has had compared to our orbit towards the comet. More and more, we really have the impression of achieving something that's never been done before. Personally, I realise more and more to what extent the observation of this comment is something new and extraordinary. Hi Rosetta, all the instruments are on. We can see the comet. Carry on like that. You're doing a great job. We're proud of you. Next month, we're going up a mountain in Chile to watch an awesome new European telescope being built. See you then.